Thank you. Thank you very much. So we're going to be up here talking about klezmer music in relation to, to time, to the past of klezmer music, to what we're doing with it, and to where it's going. And we were told, like everyone else, we have 18 minutes to speak and play. And that's really interesting, because in Judaism, 18 means life. So we're here about life. So I know that our organizer gave you a little glimpse of what klezmer music was and is. I'm going to give you a bigger part of that. I'm going to tell you what we just played. So we played traditional klezmer, music that we learned that came from the 1800s in Eastern Europe, in the Pale, if you know the Pale, which is I call the Ea countries, along the, between the Black Sea and the, and the Baltic Sea. Thank you. And um, what we played, this music was very celebratory music, and it was used for weddings. So what we played first, I played a little doina, which is an improvised piece with the scale. <laughs> And what, what that was done in a wedding, it was played for the bride and groom. And it was actually usually there to try to get the bride to cry because she was getting married and life ends at marriage. <sighs> then we went into a hora, which probably everyone thinks of Hava Nagila, but it wasn't. In klezmer music, a hora is the slowest tempo of music. And it comes from Romania. And it was used to get people up on the floor to dance. And the last thing we played was a freilach, and a freilach means happy. And that's where you were thinking, a lot of people think of klezmer as fast music. It's only part of the music, and people would get up from the wedding after they're eating and drinking and having a good time and get wild and have a great dance. And usually the bride and groom would be lifted up in chairs. So that's what we played. I want to move to a different kind of subject. I want everyone to look around the room here. Just take a minute, everyone just look around the room and look at all the different ethnicities in this room. I looked before to make sure it was true and it is. There's lots of ethnicities in here. <laughs> and um, our ethnicity, all of us, unless you're a Native American, was our families came from other countries. Either us or our parents or our grandparents or our great grandparents, someone in our families came from another country to the United States to make a better life. The Americans, America is called, well, the United States is called the melting pot of the world. So we came here to have a better life, to have better prosperity, to have, not to have persecution in our lives. That was really important. And as our ancestors or us came here, they came with their culture, and culture has a lot of stuff in it, not just music. There's humor, there's clothes, there's food, there's all kinds of arts, and they came here with it, and it helps create community. But something happened, assimilation. And when cultures come to this country, it's not a bad thing, but by assimilating, we have our cultures melt down a little, or watered down. And it just, we all try to be American. When I was a kid, I grew up in New York. You can be Jewish even if you're not Jewish in New York. But, and I, you know, we, 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 uh, spent time with the Jewish holidays and, um, we learned a little Yiddish and we went to Jewish school. But the goals of my parents was for us to be American. That was the main goal. Played violin at seven, 1950s, violin student, learned classical. That was it. So, assimilation was right there all the time. But what that does, when we assimilate and get watered down, we lose a sense of our own community and our own people. And it's not that we want to be separate from everyone else and exclude them, but by understanding your own roots and where you come from, you come back to such a stronger place that you can share with other people in a place that is much more healing. So klezmer music, what we've learned, came from Eastern Europe, which I've said. And Jews then did not have an easy life, if you know history at all. Jewish people have been persecuted for, their, uh, for centuries. And besides 
persecution. They were pogroms, which means people were being killed. And they were not wealthy people. They were really had a hard time. So when the wedding happened, and people would come to the wedding, and it wasn't like they came in on their Prius. They would come in, you know, with their carts or walked. Once they got to the town, the shtetl, it would, they'd stay there for three, five days because who's going to turn around after traveling for five hours or seven hours or whatever it took and go back the next day like we do today? And they'd have community and they'd have joy and they'd have healing, a lot of healing because having all this dancing and the celebration away from their usual life really helped them to heal. That's where klezmer music comes from. And also, these musicians would also integrate other folk music into their music by Balkan music or Roma music or any musicians that would travel through town, and they'd hear it, and they'd pick it up and intertwine it with their sound. Well, what are we doing here? We're the year 2013. We're not being persecuted, thank God. Though these guys persecute me sometimes, but that's besides the point. And, and um, you know, we make a good living, as the last speaker said, we, or someone, a roof over our head, a car, you know, we're doing okay. But what the music does is it heals us. It brings our spiritual connection to our culture. When I started learning how to play klezmer music, when I was 40 already, it brought me back to my roots. It was like the marriage of my Judaism and my music. It really brought me home to where I came from, where my ancestors had come from, and what was important to me. So we've taken the music, and we're the last speaker talked about technology. Well, we're lucky we have technology, because with the press of a button, and I'm not going to do the click that the other speaker told us not to do, um, we can hear music from all over the world. And by doing that, we can integrate into our music all the sounds that we love. Tony likes old time, American old timey, and Breck loves world music, and Diana does a lot of Balkan. Our clarinet player and our bass player do a lot of jazz. I come from a classical background, and we've integrated that into all our sounds. So we're going to play a, a, sh a, gl a glimpse of that. We're not going to play the whole song, so you don't go away and say, boy, classical music is so short. We're just going to play a piece of it to give you a taste, a tom. And this piece, Tony wrote, because all our music now is original music. And he wrote it. He has an American old-time background. The music came from an old-time tune called The Little Rabbit. And what he did was snip it a little bit, took the T off. It's not exactly the same, but now it's called Little Rabbi. Thank you. So we're going to go back to thinking about this music in a healing place. It's a real healing kind of music. Most music is. Most folk music is healing. And in fact, when you learn folk music, usually it's not because you went to a conservatory and studied music. You learned it from your parents, from your uncles and aunts. In Europe, it was mostly men, not women. And 
you would be on the porch or wherever, learn a tune. You learn two tunes in, in the old country, and they said you're playing the next wedding. You learn as you, you earn as you learn. That's what happened. So you didn't have all this technique. You just played it. But it was very healing. And in Judaism, there is a philosophy, a philosophy or a term, a, a, something, a principle, thank you. It's called tikkun olam, which means repairing the world. I grew up think, knowing that tikkun olam is the essence of Judaism. It doesn't mean how religious you are, how much you observe, whether you celebrate the holidays, whether you're orthodox or conservative or any other kind of Jew, if you do service to heal the world, you are doing Judaism. It's the most important part. And there was a great scholar, Hillel, long, long time ago, who said, those who kill one soul kill the whole world. But those who save one soul save the whole world. This is the essence of Judaism, tikkun olam. And this is my way of healing the world through my music, because this is who I am, a Jewish musician. Um, and what I'm going to encourage you all to do is go home and find out your culture, even if you're not a musician. Find out where you come from and what your roots are. We're going to play another little song, not the whole thing again. It was written by my clarinet player who couldn't come today. Um, it's called Mamoshes. It's a hora, which means it's a fast or slow song? Slow. He got it right. <laughs> it's not Havanagila. Oh, Mamoshes means uh, substance. And actually, while I'm on the word Yiddish, the word klezmorum, which is what we are, means musician. It's just Yiddish. Do fashtet Yiddish? No. Okay. You go ahead. It's interesting, I'm losing a lot of hair, and we had a speaker here a little while ago that talked about breaking, breaking his shoulder and still playing tennis. Well, this is not part of my speech, but I'm realizing, I talked to him, I broke this hand this past year, slipping on the ice in Chicago, and since I broke it, when I came back to play the violin again, I'm playing better than I did before because I'm more conscious of this hand. So you're lucky, you're getting to hear me after a broken hand. And I've told my students if they want to really play well, they, I could break the hand for them. But no one's taken me up on it. I don't, I don't know yet. <laughs> yeah. OK, so I'm going to tell you a little story about myself. Um, I'm Jewish, obviously. Um, and you know, people know, they see me, they know I'm Jewish. It's pretty there. I've been studying Yiddish for the past, I don't know, 10 years, on and off. And two summers ago, I went, two summers counting this summer, I went to Lithuania to study Yiddish in an immersion program. I'd say this in Yiddish, but you won't understand. And um, besides playing, speaking Yiddish and learning Yiddish, 
I also play klezmer music with some incredible musicians over there who are not Jewish. Interesting enough, Lithuania has a long history of anti-Semitism. They were key in the Holocaust and helping the Nazis. The Nazis didn't make them do it, they were there. And there are not that many Jews left in Lithuania. Before the Holocaust, there were 250,000 Jews in Lithuania. Now there are 5,000 left. So most people don't know what Jewish culture is about. Yet when I played with these musicians, there was such a bond because of our music and because of the healing that it didn't matter. Also, I'm not going to talk a long time about the Holocaust. You all know what that was. But interesting enough, the countries, the two countries that I consider key in the Holocaust was Poland and Germany. Today, our generation, even though we are learning traditional klezmer, our generation in Poland and Germany are trying to discover who those people were, those Jewish people. And there are many, many groups in these countries playing klezmer music. And in fact, the biggest klezmer festival in the world is in Krakow right now. It's a phenomenal festival. So this music is our way to heal ourselves. Yes, I know the Holocaust is very important for us to talk about, teach our children, never again. We're not the only people in the world that got persecuted. We don't own it as Jews. The people are persecuted all over the world all over the time, but this music is our way to heal ourselves, heal people who listen, and I've seen lots of people change from this music. It transcends time, it transcends space, it helps us with our intellect, our emotions, and our spirituality. That's what the music does here, and it's really, really important. And as you find your cultures, it would be great to find the music to help heal whatever is in your culture. And in this time now, in our country, or in our world, in this century, it is so important for us to connect with other cultures and find out about them and bring us closer together. Because even if you know a little about another culture, your prejudices dissolve. It's really important for us to do that right now. It was always important, but my generation, it's important. So we're gonna play our last song for you. And then we've actually been asked to play while you mingle a little bit. So we'll do it there. This last song um, is a song I wrote. We're going to play the whole song. So you get to hear a whole Klezmer song. Cool. If you want to get up and dance, feel free. Um, I wrote this song called Dancing on the Creekside. It's about where I live. I live in West Marin. And when it rains a lot in the winter, you never know where to stand. Because there's slides all the time.
kamu abang kamu. Thank you, and thanks to the organizers of this TEDx event. This has been great being here. Um, you, all the speakers have been wonderful, and um, I know we can't advertise or anything, but you can find us on our website and all our music. And thank you very much. We're going to keep playing, and you guys can, unless you want to say something. Where did the drummer get his tie? <laughs> When we do a concert, Aharon has a lot more instruments. Um, so he, he only brought a few instruments today, but he usually has all these sound things that he does. What? What's a cha'a? What's a tchotchka? A tchotchka, good question. A tchotchka, actually we spelt it on, on the thing in an Anglo way. I did that on purpose years ago. Tchotchka is really spelt the transliteration is T-C-H. But I figured no one would you know how to pronounce it. And also, only in Marin, we were called Red Hot Chakras once. <laughs> but a tchotchka is a knick-knack. Everyone has them in their house. There's something that you got from your grandparents, something very dear. It sits on a coffee table with a doily. It collects a lot of dust, but you can't get rid of it because it has sentimental value to it. So we're a bunch of tchotchkes. We collect dust, but we're very sentimental and very special. Thank you. The Red Hot Tchotchkes.